Hi, this photograph is from Horan, just outside Eastbourne in Sussex, UK. It's a favourite spot for fishing. There's several lakes here. I love camping, but it's a bit too early in the season for us. But our friends were there the last few days. They went down. We could have gone for a visit to them, but we had a bit busy. Uh, so I'll have to do this demonstration and send him the link to the video. But it's a, a sunset. Um, it was very cold last week and they got everything snow. We do know this area, we go past it quite a lot on our way to Bex Hill on Sea. But here we have, a, have a, one of a number of lakes with a bit of a, uh, a grassy island on the left. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet, I'll make that up as I go along. But in this part we've got the setting sun behind the main bare trees. Um, I, I think if we can get a, a plain light blue sky with with some raw sienna, possibly I might even make an orange with the light light yellow and light red. There's my palette. It's the usual uh, lemon yellow, raw sienna, uh, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, and Payne's grey. I have been asked to. Uh, show the palette more as I mix the colours as it would help and also I was talking to one of my my much younger viewers what she, what she thought of, of the videos and she said they're a bit long well some of them are a bit long but you can always fast forward through them I don't expect everybody to, to watch every bit I don't I just fast forward through bits that I, I like and want to learn from or even to, to freeze it and copy the demonstration of other artists. It's how you learn. So, because we're painting wet in wet, not the only way to, to paint watercolour paper, uh, watercolour, but a good way, it keeps the paper expanding uniformly. Whereas if you just wet a bit of it as you go, you'll find it croggles in various parts. And then when you come to put it in a mount and, and frame it, if you do one that's worth framing, you can see all the croggling under the mouth and it looks terrible. But this way, the, the paper expands uniformly and you can reclip it. And it's great. And it's great for doing skies and reflections because the paint just moves with gravity in the direction. Now normally you wouldn't paint at home in the studio as an upright. But, but for demonstrating, it's almost um, essential so that people can actually see but of course you've got the gravity of the water um, pulling down all the time and dropping and what you put on tends to end up a couple of inches lower down. But it does make for some very interesting and unpredictable effects. So I'm going to just put in this sunset east sky and I'll put that in the water. I want that nice there because it shows there's a bank but I want to do that. Now I'm going to put in some blue over the top of that. Blue and a bit of alizarin crimson. Not here we go. Bit of alizarin crimson, bit of bit of blue, because the blue is a bit insistent if you just use it on its own. So just put that in, and this will be the the height of the sky. And look, we're just dragging the colour in, and we can put some in in the water here. There, now we've got a nice, nice sky, bit of mystery, some nice things going on with the, oops, I touched that, with the, 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 the colours blending a bit. And we've also got the paper expanding, so I'm going to reclip it and work out where we go from here. Now, I'm not going to rush this, I, I, I know it is true that some of my videos are taking long, longer. And, three or four of them. I've gone over the, the failed watercolour in acrylic because watercolour paper is beautiful for painting. You get a pastel effect with the high spots and you can build up a, 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 a layer of paint which you can drag over and you get some lovely, lovely effects from it and you can work it till you get something resembling a painting. Right, now we're going to put a background in there. I'm, I'm going to invent one. I'm not going to do this uh, exactly 
so I'm going to mix some light red with some ultramarine darker than the sky and just put in put in a bit of a a background my horizon is going to be quite low I want this to indicate distance over over the bank now if I'm careful I can just do that because I can put that island of, of grass in there but if I leave some bits unpainted it will, it will make for the light tops tips of the grass so it comes over quite a way but I won't put the island in for it but I just want to just do that so that it leaves some light tops of the grasses the reeds and then uh, comes down a bit. I can, I can put a bit of dark in there actually. I can use a bit of Payne's grey with the blue. That's the darker shadow. So right, okay. Now we're going to come across here now with the horizon. And then we've got all this mass of trees that are start to like this stand of like a copse, a small copse, and, and trees lining the bank, all the things you want to paint in this lovely wet and wet style. Uh, so I won't go all the way because the bank is a like a rhododendron type of bush there. It's a bit. So you can work on this while it's wet. And as it dries, do you get your harder brush, your brush marks showing? I'll put, I'll, I'll put the reflections in later. We'll see a bit later. But right, put the bank in across here. It's the uh, there's a grass, the grass in there, so. That's where the island's going to be. Uh, I'll uh, complete this background here, put some green, blue and ultramarine. And I'll uh, sort out this sweep of grass coming down here, but I want to leave some of that. Don't want to cover that up. So I quite like that. Let's just get some darks in there. Leave some bits of sparkle. I show the bank. Now, when the brush splits, like like it is splitting, just bring it together on the on the palette. Almost, I didn't quite make it, did I? Never mind. If I want to strength, strengthen this later, I can. But we've got this nice thing going on in here and I'll, that's nice and dark and you've got the grass coming up there with the raw sienna uh, right, this tree there so that's a bit of the ivy maybe all right let's just it's got a bit dry so we can These shrubby trees coming up there. Right, let's put in some, using some silhouetted sort of grey, using ultramarine and burnt umber. That's a good grey for trees. And you don't want this too wet, so so blot it on your rag. Okay, so we've got some nice trees coming up here. But they're not going to go right up. They're going, the shape is going to be up there. So because the brush is fairly dry, it's hitting and missing now, which is what we want for an impressionist look. And these are quite spindly, but quite a few of them. I'm trying to create a shape. I'll put in the canopy of these trees later when all this 
the trunks are dry. Just a bit random. But try not to make all of them the same. Try to vary them. Otherwise it it looks mannered and you don't that's the last thing you want. So we have just a couple of bigger ones there. And then there's some going off a different angles. I might use a rig of that. Now we'll have I'll put in the bank. Now that's paint's dried a little bit. Bit of uh, bit of yellow. Raw sienna. Just dot that in. There. Right, okay. I'll put a bit of a reflection in there. Right, come across here with the with the rest of these trees. And these are starting to get taller. Right, I'm just mixing up the ultramarine and the blue. I mean the ultramarine and the, and the umber. Right. This is where we're coming up. Higher. Just heard that Maggie Thatcher's died. Love her or love her, she made a difference. But she couldn't paint her. We never had time. Let's just I'll put some some of that sort of broken colour in there. Put, so I won't have them all coming up from the base. Some coming out of shrub shrubbery. Very soon, all the leaves are going to be out. We're going to see see these lovely skeletons. Now the brush keeps splitting. All right. I'll go over this with the rigor in a minute, just to try and vary. big ones coming up here. Going right up into the sky. Uh, these are all twisted but I, you can't really do justice to it with, with the hake. And it all dries lighter than you put it on. We've got, we've got a bit of a tree coming out of that one. And that's got some ivy stuck to it by the looks of things. We'll put that in. I'll use Payne's grey and yellow for that. And just one coming up there. Coming out of this bush that I'm going to strengthen. I'll put the uh, the canopy on that in a minute. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to go back over here and just to do some texturing. With the with the Payne's grey and some lemon yellow, but it's all really in, in silhouette. I'm going to dry the hake like that, break it up so that all the bristles, well, some of the bristles go separate. You get lots of little points on it. There we go. Just a touch of water. You don't, don't want it wet. You just want it enough to, to dilute the paint. So we just put that in like that. Just adds a bit of a bit of interest to it. And then we can do the same there. I've got to use the, the paint's grey, a bit of burnt umber, a bit of, a bit of blue. And we'll just, just show that. Just 
drive or something like that. I, I don't want you to look at just a lot of dots as if I'm doing a pointillist picture. Because you can get carried away. Right, okay. So. Right, that too. Now I'm going to put in some dark yellow here. So ultra, uh, plain grey and uh, and and light yellow. So we'll just so those trees look as if they're coming out of this nearer shrubbery. Try try to vary the brush stroke and all the marks you make and the colours to to avoid monotony. Right, okay. I'll uh, put a bit of a canopy on there now. And I'll use blue and brown. Just get it on your the corner of your hake, and then just it's probably a bit wet. But you want it dark enough to register. And there's, there's a lot here. I'm going to strengthen this up in a minute. Put some more branches in. Uh, the idea of this is to show a lot of twigs without actually doing them all. And I want to preserve the integrity of this little area here. Right, we'll do the same. Same over here. So there we go. That looks okay. We'll get the uh, the rig on that in a minute. But I want to just come into this area here with this grass. So burnt uh, raw sienna in there. Maybe a bit of yellow mixed in. I want this light. This is going to be the the little island. And I want the, the lightness of it to show up against the dark darker background. That's why I did what I did. Light, leave some of these up and down there and leave some of the white showing. And you can show bits of shadow in there. Just to show some something a bit different going on. And then come down with the with this again. There. And now we can go in with a bit of dark shadowy bank. It's really the same colour but it's but much darker because it's close to the it's in shadow. So I've just mixed up some ultramarine and umber. I'll pull the reflections in later. It's just going up, going up there, around there, and there. Right, we'll uh, do the bank there. Show a bit of reflection in there. Right now, that's a bit of grass there. So I'm going to same again, but probably a bit warmer. There's a lot of lot of reedy sort of grass. I can only say that it looks a bit like uh, pampas grass but it's not it's much shorter than that but that sort of thing but I don't think I'll be able to show that uh, uh, might try but in any case let's just get this bit of bit of grass in here the sun was going down so there's quite a bit of shadow in here but I, I still want to do this as as light so I'll show that greens and it's darker some darks in there just to show you you could do that with with the bristles that are broken apart, so it's only only touching touching all that you, just to get a, a different texture on there. You can of course 
you can flick out. But it needs to be quite dark, is that? Bit of red in there, I think. Bit of red, bit of yellow. Hopefully, this will make it look a bit closer. Right, I'll dry my, I'll clean my brush in the water. Uh, well, it looks like we're going downhill, doesn't it? And I wouldn't be far wrong, so we'll. Uh, we're going to stage a bit of a bank there, just a bit larger. Brown and blue. Uh, Let's do a bit, a bit of rigor now. Oops, touch it on the floor. So uh, uh, you need quite a bit of water on your brush because the rigor doesn't hold an awful lot and you don't want it running out too quickly. So just hold it by the tip and just just flick it, flick some, some in, wiggly, wiggly bits. Stuff coming out just Just to make it interesting, a bit more water. There are Steve, all for you. Whoops, no matter. Now I need some more in here. Going up into the canopy. But can I show an impression of a painting like this? It's, I'm trying to make it look as if you could do it yourself quite easily without all the failures. It's, it's so discouraging when you, you labour away and then it doesn't go right. We've all had them, thousands. All right, okay, let's, um, I'll go to dry, dry off now. I need to in when I do the reflection, I need to put in this this orange here. I've lost it a bit, so I'm just going to clean off the palette. I don't want it muddy. Clean the paint. As you can see, they're all dry. Saves you having to throw it away later. At the end of the painting session, it's such a waste and it's a shame. But you you can do whatever you want to do. You, you we're only offering guidelines here, of the way. Well, I say we, I'm talking about Steve Cronin and myself. We're, I love his work, it's, uh, it's, it's always rewarding. But at the end of the day, you can only do what you do. You, by copying, working from other paintings, you, you develop your own style. Right, now I'll get some, a bit of, bit of nice orange in there. Across there. And I'll put a bit, of, a bit of blue and alizarin back in there. Just get all merging. Right. That background in. Coming on, 
Pretty big brush. But now with the, as that's drying with the rigger, you can start to put in So the paint's not running down. There's not enough. It, it doesn't need to be sloppy. If it's too sloppy, it just it just won't mean anything. It'll just blur into the surrounding. wet area and just go to nothing. Now these are big ones here, so we can just get them nice and big one there. I can only do this approximately, I can't show every Thing, every blade of grass and every but try, but when you put them in do try to just put them approximately where they are otherwise it'll look a bit stilted and these ones coming down here big one there another big one there Paint's dry. If you do this quick while it's paint, paint is still damp. Otherwise, you'd have to re wet it. Well, you can do as many times as you like. Just a bit of wiggly stuff. Some water ruffling. Uh, that one's coming out there, so let's get one of them in fairly. Accurate. Well, that should come across there, really, shouldn't it? No, oh, let's just show that come in. Okay, uh, there we are. Still going up here a bit, but I'm not. I'm not that bothered. I can probably just fill that hole just a little bit in there, just to blur it, bring it down a little bit. Right now, I'll dry that off. got to put some stuff in here now in this bank so I'm going to use sort of grey colour reeds plenty of water in there come out of this bank here and right right in the There again, like all these things, don't overdo it because it'll look mannered. A little goes a long way with all this. But that is the area I, what I wanted to show this, this reflection of what's behind. I don't think I've quite got it matching, but it doesn't matter. Not, not a problem. Now I probably should put a tree going up, going up from here now, in front of all of this because we're coming round, round the bend. So ultramarine, burnt umber. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them on the uh, on the videos. Always like feedback. All right, okay, let's uh, get get one coming up. Uh, where should we put it? Let's get it. Oh, I'll strengthen this one up here. I'll just make that one a bit meatier. Come over here. 
remember that the, the trunk at the base has got to hold the whole tree up so don't be too spindly. I'm, I'm not copying this, I'm just letting the brush go where it wants. There, we'll just flick out some stuff and we can just anchor it with a dark. Of course, there's a bit of shadow. And there. And that could be a bit of shadow there as well. Right, OK, I'm going to let that go before, before I poke and prod it to death. Very easy to take a painting too far and then just ruin it. So we will quit while we might be ahead. Sign it. I'll edit this now. And I'll, I'll take a photograph of it in a mount so you can see what it's like. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.